Faga beefy? Faga beefy? There's a new movie that comes out today called Nerve, and it stars Emma Roberts and Dave Franco. I don't do a lot of movie reviews. Uh, I tend to like everything, so I'm not a very good reviewer. Um, but I did get a chance to see this one several weeks ago when we were at VidCon. And my quick review is, uh, it's a pretty good date movie. Um, it's not going to necessarily win any Academy Awards, but it is an entertaining hour and a half, two hours at the theater. So if it looks interesting to you, I say go for it, go see it. Now, when I was thinking about Nerve, I started thinking about what movies are kind of like that. And it has kind of a scavenger hunt, kind of truth or dare feel to it as you go through it. And uh, there's a movie called Scavenger Hunt, uh, but there's another movie that was in the same vein that is a little bit of a cult classic, and it's one of my favorite bad movies of all time, okay? Um, it's called Midnight Madness, and it came out in 1980. It stars David Naughton uh, and a very young Michael J. Fox. Um, and I want to talk today about Midnight Madness. This movie, I don't think did very well at the box office, but it came out at a time when people like me were just getting cable for the first time and just getting HBO. And, and channels like HBO were just throwing up whatever they could get. And you'd have you know, dozens of movies, some were good, some bad, and just whatever they had they would put on. And Midnight Madness came on, and I saw it probably a dozen times uh, when I was like 12 years old. Um, and it was just one of the most entertaining, sort of, again, bad movies I've ever seen. Uh, it is the story of college teams who are brought together by a guy named Leon who sends them all on Candy the great all-nighter which is like a scavenger hunt through the city through the streets apartment. of LA and they've got to solve puzzles along the way now the main team we're following is David Naughton's team uh, and David Naughton is even though he's very excited about doing this, this scavenger hunt, he's got to look after his little brother What's for the, the night, played by Michael J. Fox. And Michael J. Fox doesn't gem. really want to be in the, uh, in the Great All Nighter. There are a couple other teams. There's a, a green team, which is sort of the, the meatheads, the football players on campus. Um, and there's a red team, which is uh, like misfit girls. Um, there's a, um, uh, a white team of nerds. and. There is uh, a blue team that's sort of the villain team, and their leader is Stephen First, who, if you've seen Animal House, he plays Flounder. The basic plot of Midnight Madness is this game called the, the All-Nighter, the Great All-Nighter, and it's run by a guy named Leon, and we don't really know a whole lot about Leon, other than that he's put together this game and everybody knows him. He's got these different teams, and his, his goal, his, his assignment to them is that he hands them a clue, it directs them, they have to solve the puzzle that's in the clue, and it directs them to some place in Los Angeles. When they get to that location, they will find another clue that directs them to another location, and they find these other clues. So it's kind of like National Treasure. you got clue and then clue and then clue, until ultimately they get to the finish line, the first one there wins the great all-nighter. Now, the, the interesting thing about this one is, when I watched the movie, I don't think I solved a single, a single clue. Um, all the different places that they mention are places that I'm not sure even people who lived in Los Angeles knew about, much less a kid from North Carolina when I'm watching this movie would know about. So they go to places like a brewery, or they go to a putt-putt course with, uh, with an arcade, or they go to the piano museum. All these different things are in, in, are in, the, uh, are in the movie. They're irrelevant. You're there to watch them have fun as they try and solve the puzzle. You're not there to necessarily solve the puzzle along with them. Um, one of the things that sort of surprised me when I'm watching this movie, again, was I called the name of the producer, and the producer is uh, Ron Miller. Uh, Ron Miller was the president of Disney at the time. He was Walt's son-in-law, uh, and, and after Walt passed away, uh, it changed hands, but Ron was the president uh, when this came out, so he's producing this movie. And early in my career, I, I worked for Disney and spent a little bit of time on the lot in Burbank. And so when I saw the shot that I'm going to show you right here of uh, Leon's assistants handing out the invitations, it's meant to look like a college campus. Uh, that's actually the feature animation building, the original feature animation building. It's still on uh, the Disney Studio lot. 
Um, but that's where Walt's offices were and all the animators were. Um, so they actually shot this on the studio lot, this one particular scene. So there's David Naughton and Michael J. Fox, uh, but the cast features a lot of other great actors that, that I want to just give some attention to. Um, first off is uh, Deborah Klinger, a member of the Yellow Team. Leader of the White Team is Eddie Deason. Eddie plays a typical nerd character in a lot of films. Uh, you may have seen him in Grease. Uh, he also was in uh, a great scene with Matthew Broderick in War Games. Uh, in addition to Eddie, you've got John Fiedler. John was in The Odd Couple. Uh, he's done a ton of stuff, but he's now known uh, as the voice of Piglet in the Disney films, the Winnie the Pooh films. Uh, also want to give a little attention to Marvin Kaplan, great, uh, great old comedian. And then, of course, if you watch the film now, you're going to recognize one cameo, uh, Paul Rubens. And Paul is, of course, Pee Wee Herman. Uh, this is pre-Pee Wee Herman. Um, Paul plays an attendant at the arcade, uh, wearing sort of a cowboy outfit, who tries to keep the teams calm. Let's all sit down and discuss this calmly, rationally, and intelligently. Okay? Fire! <laughs> I'm not going to tell you it's the best movie that's ever been made. It's not great stylistically. It's just a lot of fun. Uh, and if you've got 11 or you know, 9 year olds to 13 year olds, something like that, they'll probably think it's a lot of fun too. Um, the puzzles aren't that challenging. We're not really supposed to solve them anyway. Uh, it's just fun to sort of watch these teams interact and it's very sort of slapstick and, and very light comedy. But a lot of fun along the way. And it's great to see Michael J. Fox when he was really young and David Naughton when he was really young as well. Um, what I want to talk about is what happened after this movie. So when this started hitting on cable TV, a lot of people were getting cable for the first time when this came out. And so a lot of people like me would watch it over and over again because it was one of the few things that were actually on TV that you could see on HBO in those early days. Um, and what happened was a lot of people started thinking, gosh, could I run a great all-nighter? And a lot of times they did. So perhaps the best known one were a group of uh, kids in Tampa Bay who started playing a game in high school. And then when one of them went to Stanford, uh, he brought the game with him and they started playing the game on Stanford. And then it expanded to all of the Bay Area, the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, the game I think was called BARF, B-A-R-F, uh, which is a parody, a play on uh, the train system we have here, which is called BART, B-A-R-T, Bay Area Rapid Transit. Um, and it was the same type of thing where you'd have clues that would lead you to different points in the city. Uh, there are other things that are like that that are going on. There's a group out here called the Go Game uh, that do similar types of urban scavenger hunts, urban uh, puzzle mysteries. So it has had a legacy and uh, I know some of these games have happened in Austin. I think there's one going on in Arkansas. Uh, if you ever wanted to participate in one, uh, I'm sure you can find it on the internet. If I can find some, I'll put some links in the description. But it's great when people have a passion for a film or a movie that touched them when they were younger and they try and bring it to life and experience it uh, on their own. So I'm, I'm always a big fan of people doing more with what they've seen and sort of being more involved. Uh, so I'm, I'm a huge fan of those types of things. Uh, again, I appreciate you li listening to me. This is a, a, one of my favorite sort of childhood memory movies. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't seen Midnight Madness, uh, I actually do recommend it. Um, if you can find a copy of it, uh, it is a fun movie for me and again, a, a great memory. If we look at the countdown for where we are in our movies, I believe we were at 999,981 before today. I'm only gonna, I mentioned some of the movies, but I'm going to count this one, Midnight Madness. So that brings us to 999,980 uh, that we've covered so far. Uh, I appreciate you being along for the journey. If you're enjoying this, I really hope you'll subscribe. It does help me out quite a bit. Uh, and if you have a favorite movie that maybe isn't a classic, uh, maybe it's a cult film, something that you really enjoy uh, that is sort of like a guilty pleasure for you. I hope you'll share it in the comments below. If I haven't seen it, I'll definitely try and give it a shot. If I have seen it, maybe I'll include it in a future episode. So thank you again for joining me on A Million Movies. I've got a long way to go, a lot of movies to get through. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're along for the ride. And hopefully we'll see you on the next episode. All right, see you soon.